All right, the time is now uh, 5.05 a.m. My goal was to leave at five o'clock. I'm leaving a little later because I had to get some batteries for my, for my key fob. Couldn't find any, so I have to pick up some on the way. Guys, if your bike can't start, if it doesn't turn on, then chances are it's your key fob, just in case you don't know. So we got about a 10 hour stretch. Let's see where we at. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop and train my clients on the road, it's July 4th. And I have a few people to coach. So I'll just type in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, we got, ooh, baby, this is more ground pound than this, man. I'm gonna tell you the truth of why I'm doing this, right? So my big bro, bro man, he's always riding all over the place. You know what I'm saying? So we got 10 hours, 33 minutes. And uh, I'm gonna break it down, first five hour leg. Let me see, from five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, I pull off and train my client, that's five hours. And then after that, I hit it again, all right? So, but I want to surprise my brother. I don't think nobody ever did that with him, so I'm getting out there. Let's go, Ride Fit Nation. me up a naked this is really good mango keeping it healthy in the road you ain't got to go sloppy all the time every now and then you can have your little junk food but before we do that you already know what's coming 25 push-ups baby do them with me 25 reps let's get it all right let's go I know how we do 25 reps every time it keeps the blood cup it keeps the, that blood pumping keep the heart rate up my heart rate is up <laughs> Fam. So we are now in Kentucky. Here we go. Bam, baby. And we are moving well, man. Happy July 4th to all of y'all. And uh, yo, get in that road ride. Have some fun in that road. All right. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. All right, we're at gas stop number, no, number two over here in uh, in Kentucky. What's coming up next? The state, I believe, on the 75 is Ohio. That's coming up, and then after Ohio, after Ohio, then comes Michigan. All right, so one of the things when you're traveling is find the little snacks that can keep you going. So right now, my second drink, I got the Gatorade, which is good electrolytes for the body. Uh, the Gatorade is just amazing when you're taking these long rides, staying hydrated. 
and then I bought me a small thing of these mini Oreos that I'm gonna snack on because of the sugar. And then right now I'm gonna have me some nachos because of the sodium that's in this, all right? So kind of know the stuff that you are gonna utilize. But before I eat this, gotta do my push-ups. Let's get these 25. There's 25 out the way. You ready? Let's go. baby not bad for 48 still rocking let's go so one of the things that you guys should implement when you're traveling I have about four hours left out of the ride I'm not in a hurry it's cloudy as heck it looked like the rain is about to drop so I'm definitely gonna put my, my rain gear on but some of the things that y'all don't 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 probably don't do enough of is stretch your body. So I'm gonna show you guys some of the things that I do really quick. All right, it's pretty simple. Let me get the camera kind of situated that way y'all can see what I'm doing. And you got a second guess now, all right? So one. You want to give a slight tilt back? Open up that lower back. Then you're gonna take the legs out here. And you're gonna just relax the shoulders. Keep the stomach tight. I know it's a little loud. Good. And one. That's it. Right here. thing that you should be doing find something to put your leg on I normally put my leg up on the bike my foot up on the bike and I'm stretching out the hamstrings get the foot up on the bike just reach over and try to grab your toes and pull them forward all right feel that stretch and then you do the same thing on the other side I'm telling you this makes a heck of a difference when you're riding long distance a heck of a dis difference, all right? And when you get to your destination, like, you know, you get in the hotel, do that as well. That will cut down a lot of back pain. Ah. All right, so I'm getting back to get on the road again. I'm gonna check the weather ahead of me and it'll be off again, all right? I hope you guys are liking the content that I'm giving y'all. Don't forget, join the GroupMe thread. No matter what state you're in, join the GroupMe thread and start pulling more people in your state in the thread. So you can start breaking some state lines or not breaking state lines, but riding your bike, whatever it is. Let's go. All right, time to push it. We got four hours left. Let me tell you the exact time. Guys, when you ride in these distance rides, break them up into parts. You don't have to try to go straight the whole time. You really, really don't. I'm telling you, just break them up into parts. If you get tired, sometimes all it takes is just a little bit of rest, all right? And I'm seeing a whole lot of bikes out here in Kentucky too. Big ups to Kentucky, big ups to Tennessee, and then big ups, I'm gonna go to Ohio next. Big shout outs to Ohio, and of course Michigan is my final, my final um, state that I wanna get into. But I might also ride out to West Virginia. We'll find out. Let's see what we do. Let's go!
right, the rain chose the right time to come when I decided I want to stop and grab me something to eat. So I'm going to go in the Cracker Barrel, take about an a hour's break, no rush, no rush at all. And I'm going to enjoy my, my relaxation. And then I got my rain gear, so rain ain't no big deal. I'm never going to run from rain, baby. Rain is just beautiful. It's beautiful. I mean, I won't go out in the rain if I know it's pouring rain. I'm not just going to get up and go and ride in the rain if I don't have to. But if I get caught in the rain, I'm good. I'm real good. All right, so what I ended up getting was um, I got the chicken strips, but but grilled, not fried. Getting back on my health my health game man kind of keeping myself accountable not saying i'm not gonna have any junk food you know what i mean but just be mindful of what i'm consuming in the body because you know as we age the body just starts to go downwards or downhill if you don't take care of yourself the way you should all right so like i said i'm taking some time off relax a little bit and then i hit the road again i'm feeling a little tired but not tired enough to where it can't keep going I get my, my last leg of gas. I booked a hotel, my favorite hotel I like to stay at is La Quinta. I just love that hotel. So I'm gonna, um, it's about three hours, 30 minutes. The food was good. Uh, now it's time to get some food on the road. Get some wind food. <laughs> Yo, in the comment section, let me know how you guys doing, man. Let me know where you guys are riding to this year. What you guys got planned, cause maybe I could jump in the ride with you guys too, if I'm invited. take a good little rest man I found a little bench laid back a little bit tiredness just just hit me real hard and fast so I said damn I'm getting tired my eyes got heavy I mean it just happened if you ever ride long distance or drive long distance you know how that happens it just happens out of nowhere sometimes the smartest thing to do is to just stop rest for a little bit regroup a little bit because you ain't in no hurry. Once again, there's no hurry. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm getting back on the road. I'm about two hours and 15 minutes from the hotel. I booked the hotel already in advance. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. Get myself ready for the uh, sleep time after that. And guys, if you don't have your earplugs, get your earplugs, man. I, you know, I have a few videos where I'm talking about these earplugs. Get your earplugs. Trust me. Get them on Amazon. Just type in motorcycle earplugs. That's it. And you will find a bunch. All right? All right, let's get let's get going. What's up family it's sensei all right so i'm gonna talk a little low because i'm in the lobby space of the la quinta inn here in detroit michigan i just love these hotels why because it's animal friendly so when i'm traveling with my family and i have my dog titan if you've never seen titan he's a doberman big beautiful guy that's my son basically so anytime i travel the la quinta is where i go the price is very reasonable you're looking at maybe 125 150 a night um if you don't want to do that you can go to the other smaller hotels um the rooms here are really nice they have the gym i also get a chance to coach my clients like right now i'm not on vacation 
I still got to train my clients. So I got at 9 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and at 12 o'clock. And then I'm going to hit the road and head back, back to Georgia. So the ride is about 10 hours, which took me about 12 hours total because, you know, you got to equate for the stop in, the rest in. I took my little 15-minute um, nap, power nap, which made a heck of a difference in the travel. So this part of the video is talking to all my peoples who aspires to ride their bikes long distance. Now, long distance for you might be, might be five hours, maybe four hours. Maybe it's your first 100 miles. Maybe it's your first... 20 hour ride, whatever that is, right? Sometimes people will tell you to plan ahead. I ain't gonna tell you that. Um, I'm spontaneous. And if you're spontaneous like me, you might just get up and decide, hey, I wanna go take a ride. For me, me and Bro Man, for example, we have a miles challenge. So we always compete in a fun way about the miles challenge. As a matter of fact, we're gonna start the miles challenge in the group me start in January and it's going to see who can get the most miles at the end of the year it's for everybody in the thread who wants to join there will be a pot and you're going to put in let's say $20 each person the winner gets the whole pot it's that simple but he called me and said uh either he called me or I called him I don't remember but all I remembered was was he said hey man I'm on my way to Detroit I'm like Detroit man if I wasn't going to make that pizza run I would have Ridden to New York or something like that to get those miles too. And uh, I woke up yesterday morning, which was Thursday morning at four o'clock. And I said, you know what? I'm going to drive to the, I'm going to ride my bike to Detroit also because there are two states I never rode my motorcycle in. One is Ohio State. And two, it's Michigan. So now I got two states checked off the list. So I got on my motorcycle, kissed my wife. Told him I'm going out, and boom, I'm gone. And here I am. Didn't plan anything. I'll put, I put a pair of pants, I put a t-shirt, I put some underwears, I put my, 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 my body oil, and I uh, forgot my toothpaste. The hotel provides toothpaste. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's all of that. So when you're traveling, planning is good, but sometimes just get out there and be spontaneous. The only thing I'll tell you is this. Whenever you travel, make sure you have at least $1,000 in your bank account for anything that could happen. You can get a flat tire, you need to get a tow, maybe you need to be in a hotel more than one night. You know, have the money available. You don't have to spend $1,000, but just always put an emergency fund aside. $1,000 is simple for any rides that's over, any rides that say within a 10 to 15 hour mark. Um, or one to 15 hour mark. Those are the hours, right? Have a thousand dollars. The next thing I'll tell you is this. Get to know the hotel chains that you like. That way you know what you're expecting from the hotel. Like I know that when I go to La Quinta, I know what I'm expecting. I'm expecting the rooms to be nice. I'm expecting the gym to be available. I'm expecting a swimming pool. Even though I don't use a swimming pool, but I might use a swimming pool today. I haven't been in a pool in a long time. What else can I tell you as a rider? When you're riding on the highways, when you're doing local rides, local rides are made for short distance rides. They're not made for long hauls because you will be on that road forever. It's gonna be a lot of turns, more beautiful than the highway, but the highway will get you to your destination faster. Now, speaking of faster, if the speed limit is, let's say 65, you can safely go between five to 10 miles above. And most of the times, police won't bother you. I'm not saying to do it. I'm just telling you like what I'm doing. When I'm in a 70 range, 70 speed, uh, miles per hour um, speed limit, I'm going at 80, sometimes. Another thing to be mindful of too is, is drivers who are high rate, drivers who are aggressive in a sense, they wanna pull up behind you real quickly or whatever, when you see that, move over. I like to ride the far left lane because now I don't have to worry about cars coming over and exiting and doing all this different stuff. So when I'm in the far left, the only thing I have to worry about is a car that might want to get over to the far left lane. Most of the times they're not going to get over into you because they will see you in the far left lane. And I'm moving at a, at a, at a, at a good pace in the far left. If I'm riding in a group, you don't have to speed like crazy. 
but you have to keep a good tempo. That way traffic is moving proper. You're not holding up traffic. Another thing about traveling too is like, if you get to a state and you have the time, you can go and visit things within the state, like a museum or an aquarium. You could visit a specific restaurant, the town. You can do that. This trip, I'm not doing that. This trip is only a get your miles trip. This is all it is, just get the miles. I'm staying in, in the hotel and then I'm training, like I said, and then I'm gone. I don't want to visit a museum. I don't want to visit an aquarium or a restaurant. I just want to get here, do what I had to do, and get it going. That's my mission. You see what I'm saying? Also, when you, if you're a new person into travel, you don't have to have people to ride with. Learn how to depend on yourself. Get on your bike and ride your damn scoot. Learn how to travel on your own. But you should let somebody know where you're going. Let somebody know when you get there. In the group, if, if you're in the group me chat, yo, put head in, you know, heading out, blah, 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 and put where you're going. That way we know where you're headed. You could be in a state where somebody else is at, right? And if something happens, that person can reach out to their peoples and get you off the road safe. So there's a whole thing about the group me ride fit nation um, thread because we're building this camaraderie where we could all lean on each other. Let's say, for example, you're riding through Georgia and your bike happened to shut down on you or you need, you know, a place to rest up a bit. Guess what? You got me. I'm in Covington, Georgia. I'll be able to come pick you up. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just knowing people. If I'm down in, let's say, uh, North Carolina and I want to connect with somebody, I'm going to connect with Mayor. I'm going to connect with, with, with a few brothers in North Carolina. The goal is to be around people you can depend on, but you don't have to be around them to ride your motorcycle. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay. What else should I tell you about riding? Because there's so much more about distance riding. And, uh, oh yeah, when it comes to gas, when you hit that quarter range, that, that quarter of a tank that's left, get ready to start filling up that tank. Here's why I'm saying that. You don't know how far the next gas station might be. At a quarter tank, you might have 96 more miles left in that tank. And maybe the next gas station is 100 miles left away from where you are. You ain't going to make it. So when you hit that quarter tank full, get ready to start filling up that gas tank again. That way you know you're good for the next 240 miles, of whatever bike you're riding, you're good for the capacity of that bike. So I also show you guys some stretches that you should be doing or you could do when you're riding your motorcycle. When you're riding your bike, if you stay in that one spot, your body is clamming up. It's, it's, just, it's just clamming. So what you want to do is you want to move your body a bit, right? Shift your butt off the left, shift your butt off to the right, rotate your shoulders, do those little simple movements that, that turn the head, look up, look down. These are the things I'm showing you right now in the B-roll. You know, tur turn your torso, but keep your eyes on the road as you're doing this. And I prefer to do this when the road is more emptier than when I'm in heavy traffic. Never do that stuff in heavy traffic because that little split second that you look away and turn back, there could be a car right in front of you that stopped and you can't do nothing about it. And speaking of that, on the way down, I wasn't recording, but on the way here, there were two cars that were stopped in the far right lane on the highway. I'm not talking about the shoulder. They were stopped. And if your brain is not paying attention in your brain, you might think the car is still moving, especially when you're moving at a certain speed. Well, guess what? I, I, <laughs> I looked and I'm like, wait a minute, that car stopped. So I had to move out the way. Can you imagine if I was on my phone playing with my phone or if I was looking to the right at that beautiful view? Right. Ooh, look at the mountains. And I turn around. There's a car there. My brain wouldn't recognize that the car is not moving. And boom, that would have been it for me. Right. So pay attention when you're on the bike. Don't play around. And like I said, use discretion. 
there are times that I loosen up a little bit. Like I said, when the traffic is, is way less, when I'm in a more secluded area, I can loosen up just a little bit. But remember, you might be in a secluded area and there might be a deer in the road. It could be what I just learned the term road snakes in the road. Road snakes are pieces from the tires of a truck that, that lays all over the road. People might think, oh, it's the tire, it's soft. No, that thing is tough as heck and they could send you flying off your bike. Young cuz, thanks a lot for giving me the term road snake. <laughs> I like that term. But riding comes with a lot of responsibilities. It's not about all of the, the glitz and glamour of the road. It's about the, the, the horrific things that can happen on the road and being mindful of that, knowing that you're in an, in an extreme sport. It doesn't matter the motorcycle you're riding. You don't have to be doing wheelies and indos and flipping your bike. No, it's still an extreme sport. So you have to treat your motorcycle like that. And you have to be willing to develop your skills defensively as much as you can. So when, I'm, when I was doing martial arts, I wasn't slacking up on the people I was sparring with. I, I never wanted to compete, didn't choose to compete. But in, in the dojo, we was competing all the time. So I knew that my man Marvin had the wickedest sidekick in the planet. That dude's sidekick felt like Thanos was punching the crap out of me any time he kicks me. So I had to develop my skills to learn how to evade that wicked kick. I'm always developing my skills in my life. I want you to do the same thing. Develop the skills in your life. If you know you're lacking in your ability to, 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 to move out the way at a fast pace, let's say you're moving at 80 miles an hour, by you just shifting the bike, it's not going to move out the way. You have to counter steer the bike. If you want to go towards the left, you have to pull the handlebar a little bit towards the right. If you want to go towards the right, you got to pull the handlebar a little bit towards the left. It's counter steering, right? You have to learn how to stop your motorcycle at like that. If you're moving at 80 miles an hour, you need to learn how to stop your bike at 80 miles an hour. So you find a secluded area and you practice how to utilize your rear brake, your front brake. The front brake has a lot more stopping power. So during an emergency, if you hit the front brake way too fast, yeah, that's not gonna be nice for you because the, the fork is gonna, is gonna compress and it can send your bike flying, send you flying off the bike. So you gotta balance out the, the, the percentage of how much of the rear versus how much of the front. The rear brake, you use the rear brake to control the bike. So when you're going at a higher speed, you want to use more of the front brake, but some of the rear brake, which is going to help to stabilize your motorcycle. Now, everybody have their own opinions. I'm just giving you the facts for me. This is what works for me. When you're going in turns, let's say you're going on some twisties. Don't ride your front brake. When you ride your front brake, it's going to let the bike want to shift off the lane and go further off the, or off the damn cliff. Use the rear brake. Keep your gears pretty low. You have more control in lower gears than you do in higher gears. Now you can use the brake and your clutch and you can enjoy using that. I use the rear brake. Some people like to use the front brake. Once again, I'm giving you my opinion. If you guys have anything that you do, put it in the comments. You know what I'm saying? But new riders, people who've been riding for years, doesn't make you an experienced rider, right? Because Experienced riders are people who experience things <laughs> in their life, who experience the road in a certain way. Um, people who have been riding for years might just ride their bike on the weekends for the past 15 years. Yeah, I've been riding my bike for years. Not really, you've been riding your bike on the weekends for the past 15 years. You didn't really experience much of anything, right? So. The people who experienced the accidents, I haven't had an accident, thank God, I don't, I, I don't want to. I've had my bike fall I mean, a couple of times, but I, have, I haven't fallen off my bike. And I'm hoping that I never will. But there are people who have. Those people have experienced that, right? So we can all learn from the different experiences of each other, which their experiences become your, your, your learning and you begin to comprehend and you begin to excel at becoming better at what you're doing. Now, I hope that's making sense to what I'm saying, right? Um, there's a lot, man. There's a whole lot. Me, I just want you to have fun. I want you to enjoy your motorcycle. Enjoy your time. Don't feel limited by it. Don't let people's fear stop you from learning how to ride better, learn how to take longer rides. Just keep on pushing yourself. Keep on driving. 
keep on being you. This lady's loud behind me. I don't know if y'all can hear her. Man, they are loud as heck. Okay, I'm talking about they yelling. <laughs> but the um, don't be fearful. Just just be free. Enjoy it. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about people that always say be safe. I hate when people say that. That's my that's my pet peeve. Um, some of y'all be saying that to me online too. Yo, be safe, be safe. What is that? What does safe mean? What does safe mean? Chances are, and I understand it's coming from a good place, but I just say enjoy your ride, man. That's it. I, I'm not saying be safe because be safe gives me this little eerie thing like something is going to happen. Listen, when, when most of us are riding, we're not choosing to ride reckless and careless, so you're being safe. You're being as safe as you can. But the truth of the matter is, uh, somebody will come behind you and hit you and you can't do nothing about it. There was a brother that works at uh, Falcon's Fury and he said he was moving at 75 miles an hour and a car was coming at 100 something miles an hour. He showed me the picture, his whole side is all scraped up and the car hit him. Two assholes that's racing on the highway. And I, I'm, you know what, let me just touch base on that really quick. When I'm riding through Atlanta, I see a lot of these dudes that's racing their cars with no care in the world about other people's lives and i'm gonna tell you man i don't wish bad on people but i do wish bad on these people who put people's lives at risk and you know what happened the dude did not get arrested the dude did not get a charge they only said that he was just uh um driving too close and that's it there is no laws protecting motorcyclists so we are basically at the mercy of the public Somebody could hit you purposely and just make an excuse and say, I didn't see you. So my question is, which one of you guys have connections with, with legislation that we can start to make some movements on safety for motorcycle riders? Because there's, there's no laws protecting us. I'm telling you, zero laws. So we are at the mercy of the motorists, the people driving their cars. All right. So I'm not, I'm not telling you that to scare the hell out of you. I'm telling you that just to give you the facts that anything can happen at any time. Somebody rear-ending you in a car and rear-ending you in a motorcycle is a very different thing. Another thing is, it's not only the cars you got to worry about. You have to also worry about the, the dumbasses that's on their motorcycles. <clears throat> the ones who is not paying attention and the ones who wants to show off. Speaking of showing off, why is it that when another motorcycle, a motorcyclist see another motorcyclist on the highway, they speed up to catch up and speed past you. Why? <laughs> it happens all the time. Ooh, there goes a motorcycle, so I'm going to speed up too and roll my throttle and I'm going to shoot past him. For what? <laughs> Yo, stay your ass in your lane, man, and just ride your bride, man. Ride your bike, man. Don't endanger nobody, because now you're trying to speed up to show off and the dude at the same time might be trying to move over to the right and then there you go coming up on him. Then you're done. And then he's done. For what? Calm down, calm the hell down. All right, so anyway, um, I'm gonna get me some breakfast, get ready for my sessions. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the ride. I hope you guys enjoy the messages, enjoy the videos. Keep it positive, join the GroupMe thread. We need people from different states joining, connect with people, share the thread with everybody you got because we're gonna build this thing. We got a uh, hundred plus people in there right now. Um, a lot of the people are very quiet. They're not posting, they're not doing much of anything, but don't join the thread if you're going to be dead, if you're going to be all quiet and just in the background twiddling your thumbs and looking to see what everybody else is doing. You're just you're just wasting up. You're just taking up space. If you're in the group me thread and you're not posting anything and you're not taking rides and you're not nothing, get off the group me thread. Leave it because this is not a place for you to come and hang out. This is not a place for you to come if you don't have a motorcycle. Hey, man, I want to learn how to ride. I want to be inspired. Wrong place. Just be inspired right here on the channel. The group me thread is strictly for people who already have their motorcycles and their trikes, right? Not the slingshots. <laughs> Listen, slingshot people, I'm not snapping on y'all, man. I'm just having a good old time. If you ain't got the humor, you can't joke about it, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go talk about the Indian riders then. Or what about if I talk about the street glide riders? <laughs> if you can't have fun, you, you also can't be in the thread because 
We need people who is fun, energetic, people who's not afraid to laugh, people who's not afraid to just be real and just enjoy life. And once again, have fun. If you can't have fun, the door's right there. Get the hell out. That's just point blank. We don't need no negativity in the space at all. You feel me? Men and women, you are allowed. <laughs> we need more females riding. And tell more people in your state, don't wait for somebody else to start pulling rides together. Start being a leader in your state and just keep on plugging hashtag ride fit nation, hashtag ride fit nation. Come on, guys. Let's keep this thing grinding. Let's keep on getting these money, the miles, the muscle. Let's get the muscle, the miles, the money. Let's get the miles, the money, the muscle. Let's get the money, the muscle, the miles, whatever direction you choose to go right now. I got my miles in. Then I'm gonna get my muscles and my money. And then I'm gonna get some more miles again, heading back to Georgia. All right, family. Let me just get my audio stuff situated. So I told you guys yesterday that I was not going to stop at any location. I was just gonna ride out and then head back home. But after some careful consideration, I'm talking to one of my clients and come to find out she's from, she lived in Detroit for a long time and she said uh, I told her I was gonna go on a ride to, uh, tomorrow to a pizza spot she said pizza oh you're gonna have to visit um, Buddy's Pizza it's one of the oldest pizzerias here in Detroit and it's Detroit pizza well guess what I never had Detroit pizza so that's where we're going guys I'm gonna go to the Detroit pizza and I might, I might even decide to go to the Motown Museum while I'm out here, and then I'll just take my time heading back home. It's gonna, it's gonna, I'm going further away from home, but you know what? You guys deserve it. <laughs> Y'all deserve it, baby. All right, so great night, great stay. Like I said at La Quinta, having a good time. I'm right by the airport. Let me show you guys that plane going up. Apparently, this is Delta. Can you see the plane? I don't know if you guys can see the plane, but I'm right by the airport. Really good spot. I loved it. I didn't even put my gloves on yet, but I will in a few. But good morning to everybody. This is day number two on my quickly to getaway. I love every second of it, every minute, every moment, and uh. I'll do it again. All right, stay tuned. See you guys in a second. Let's go. The roads out here, they are terrible in this area. Man, this reminds me of New York City, man. The roads are really bad. So I'm, I'm headed on I-94 East and the ride is 38 minutes from where I'm at. That can easily become an hour but I'm gonna get out there, do my thing, enjoy my pizza, and then have pizza again tomorrow. Guys, there's something beautiful about just getting that wind therapy. When you're feeling down a little bit and you need to get a little bit of relaxation, yo, get it, man. You know, while I'm, while I'm on it and I'm showing you guys as I'm riding, I'm gonna ride and talk to y'all real quick. So this week was, was was interesting because I got this question on, on in the comment sections. I got this question through text, and I got this question uh, in person, just from different people. But the question basically was, how the hell you get to travel so much as a married person? <laughs> and it made me realize why so many marriages fail. Because <laughs> y'all married people are like prisoners in your own world, man. Like a marriage that should that should not even be a question of how I get to travel so much and I'm married. That shouldn't even be a thought. And um, that shows me that the level of trust in marriages are limited, and it also shows me that the level of insecurity is extremely high. So let me just tell you guys real quick, I'm, I am a free bird. 
okay? I'm a free bird. And this is one of the reasons why most of the times I'm a loner, all right? This is why I do a lot of things on my own and why I don't need a bunch of people to do things with. I can enjoy me at all times with somebody or without somebody. So my girlfriend that I had before, my wife, is not a person who I knew would have lasted long because she's too jealous. And the way I like to get up and go, she would have had a heart attack every single time. Now my wife, on the other hand, she's a woman, of course, and she's a human being, of course, and there's gonna always be some little emotions there. She doesn't express it to me, but I'm pretty sure sometimes she might feel a certain way about it, but I'd be lying if I said she's 100% perfect with it, but, but she does not stress me out, why? And let me turn the camera for y'all so y'all can hear me talking to y'all directly. She don't stress me out because she knows that number one, I'm not doing anything to disgrace her as a husband. I'm not doing anything to disgrace her as a woman. I'm not out here, number one, looking for women. Honestly, if I was looking for women, I don't have to drive cross country. I can get women right there in Georgia where the hell I live. My point to you is jealousy protects nothing. Jealousy stops absolutely nothing. Yo, you could go to a party with your wife and your wife could go into the bathroom, get banged out really quick for five seconds and, and you would never know. She'll come right back out. The same thing for the woman. The husband could go bang out that said female in the bathroom for five seconds, come back out and you would never know it. So all of that jealous bull crap don't make no sense. So if you're in a marriage where you can't get up and be free, if you're in a marriage where you, you have to question your spouse, then that's no good. Oh, I gotta show you guys this bridge. I'm gonna be turning the camera every now and then, but y'all will hear me talking as we go, all right? So excuse the movement, the moving around of the camera, but I gotta give you guys some views as well. Then I don't know if that's a marriage that's a healthy one. A lot of marriages where there's no trust and there's no freedom, it becomes a problem. And fellas, if you are one of those guys that's consistently trying to keep your woman under lock, um, you need to change that crap. Cause I got news for you, bro. You you can't stop anything from happening. You just can't. Now, now some of y'all might not want to hear that, cause maybe you that jealous guy that think you got it under control. That you think that yo, I'm running this. <laughs> I'm running this household. Well, let me tell you, you ain't running a damn thing. You ain't running nothing. Okay? She is lying to you, and she's making you feel like as if you're special, bro. Okay? She's making you feel that way, and. She will make you continue feeling that way. But you ain't running a damn thing. Change your, change your attitude and change your outlook. <laughs> Ladies, I don't know what the hell you laughing at, but the same thing applies to you as well. You might think that you got the best pum pum in the world. And you might think you putting it on him and he ain't going nowhere. And I'm gonna keep him locked in. Hell no. That man is a man. You can't keep a man locked in. A man is gonna choose to stay or not. I'm that man who chooses to stay. So my wife, I love her to death. Lots of respect. I respect my wife enough. That way she know if I'm gonna cheat, then it won't be me cheating. I'm just gonna tell her. I give her the opportunity to agree with my decision or not, but I'm, my wife does not deserve for me to go out there and disrespect her. You crazy? Hell no. So I get to travel because our marriage is secure. If my wife decides that she wanna go out right now and travel someplace, I'm not gonna hold her. I'm gonna encourage her to go. Well, yo, D, what if, what if she goes out, man? And she's she's getting 
banged out by another guy. Well, that dude better look better than me. That Negro better have a better looking body. His weight wang better be at least three inches longer than mine. His money game better be better than mine. And he can't ride a street glide. <laughs> Yo, I'm not a jealous guy, baby. My wife will tell you that about me anytime. I, she, I say, I say, listen, if you ever feel like you want to get banged out by somebody, aside from me, just tell me. If you don't tell me, then that becomes a problem. That's just me. All right? Some of y'all cats can't, can't fathom that. Woo! Look at this view. Some of y'all can't fathom that. Some of y'all are stuck in your ways so much, you try to control every damn thing. You can't control anything. I'm telling y'all this. You cannot control everything. Now, that's a big tire. That make my fat tire look like crap. You see that big tire? Damn. All right, so, guys, that's the reason why I'm able to get out there. My wife and I are just awesome together. I, I married the right woman that could handle this crazy Jamaican, okay? All right, I'll see y'all in a few. Like I said, we're gonna have some pizza. I'm gonna see how that pizza tastes. And I might go out to the, to the Motown Museum while I'm out here. The skies are still angry. You can see it. It looks like it is going to pour, um, but it looked like this yesterday as well. But it, you, you already know, the rain ain't stopping a damn thing. is the uh, small and it comes with little tiny slices like this is this is Detroit pizza not New York pizza that's why I had to try it out give me a second let me take a let me take a picture of, of this thing mm -hmm. I love my pizza let me give y'all a shot of this look at that Now here's my question. Am I gonna like it? We'll find out. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the camera rolling. And uh, I'll give y'all my real, my real authentic opinion. D D Detroit, don't get mad at me if I don't like y'all pizza. So what's different? The sauce tomato sauce is on the top cheese is on the bottom whereas in New York the sauce is on the bottom the cheese is on the top and we got it rounded they got it squared but it's delicious I got spinach mushroom and some chicken this is good mm. Detroit thumbs up baby Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Can I get a um? You got a box that can take this with me? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. 
I'm not gonna be able to eat all of this in one shot knowing that I have a long ride. But this pizza is definitely on point. And I will come back if I'm back in this area. If you guys happen to be in the area, let's check them out. All right? So good. That way when I'm riding, I have some stuff to snack on. Save money that way. All right, that rain, the rain came down, but it is what it is. It's still raining a little bit right now. I don't even think I want to put on rain gear because the way it looks, looks like the water is going to feel pretty damn good to me as I'm riding. Man, that rain started coming down super duper hard. So I said, hey, you know what? I am gonna put my damn rain gear on. Cause this rain looks like it's gonna be raining for a while. What? And I might as well just get a little gas too while I'm out. I honestly thought it was done. <laughs> rain gear. <laughs> rain gear, baby. It don't take long to put your rain gear on either. So I figured why I get soaked. Good night.